Okay, so moving on to the fourth part of the instructions that you were giving. It says create dynamic labels for your features. And you need to determine what type of labeling to use, and I kind of put in quote or parentheses, do you use the Maplex engine or not? And for part A, I think everybody got just label the rivers, and if you if you turn the features, label features on, this was specifically played out in one of your exercises. I like to have the Maplex engine on just because you, there's a lot of helpful things that you can do with it. You can manage things a lot easier here from your, your placement properties in the label manager. And as far as the position goes, you can have it on the line, make it a little bit more finely tuned adjustments to how you want the labels to show up. And one of the reasons that this is good is because if you zoom in and change where you are, then it changes with you. So that's good to know for the future. But like, you know, again, this is for, this is a static presentation that you're giving, that you're going to give to these guys. So one of the things that you might have done that a couple people did, some didn't, and this was only, I don't, I don't even know if this was a minor deduction. I'd have to look through my notes real quick, but one thing you would want to focus on is this entire piece here is the Red River, and then it goes up to the north, and the East River comes off. So if that was important for some reason, for building bridges' sake, if it was a, a definite no zone to the west of or to the east of, for whatever reason, for zoning purposes, agriculture purposes, drainage purposes, for example, you might need to know what river this is, so you would want to have a static one, and you could do that any of the ways from the book. You could turn it into, just copy this one, turn them into annotation, and put it up there. But, you know, just looking at it like I have it right now as an example, instead of me putting a label up there, if I leave it blank, then it's like, okay, well, is this the East River or is it the Red River? And some people had the Red River up here, but it was difficult to tell which the extension was off to the west and that's just one of those it, it's really nitpicky and I didn't take off many points for it if there was that difference there in your map but believe me when I say and I'll give you a quick example there is a lawyer at our corporate office for the mining company that I work for and she is a stickler for some of the silliest things that depending on what color you outline a potential landowner's tract or what font the annotations are on or which part of the feature did you label the line here or did you label it here because for some reason it matters to the interpretation of a lawyer and you're going to run into a lot of that and again for the millionth and one time it's all about the person that's going to be seeing your data so that's why that's why I wanted to emphasize it on the test and bring it to your attention so that way you, know, you could kind of get a little taste for even though it's annoying, some of the things that you might come across when you're trying to manipulate data into an end product for someone. Now, the labeling of the cities, I had a couple of different approaches to that. Some people could just labeled the features and then converted them to annotation and moved them. I had some people do what I would prefer to do, which is just use the label engine, and they'll. You could set it up for bold and italic, make it a little bit bigger. This is just an example, so that way, you know, it's different from what your other labels might be. I didn't do, I forgot, sorry. The rivers, we'll make that blue, just like the rivers, and we'll make it a little, a little bigger, but not all the way. So, changing the font and doing silly things like that does make a difference for your, when you're labeling things like points or lines. And... For the next part, each territory, and including with that territory the region that it belongs to. It seemed like a lot of people kind of missed on this. Uh, I had a few people get it right, but I, I wanted you to kind of refer to that hint video that I gave you, and you can either right click on the feature and go to expression here, or as I would I would prefer you do it, the other, there's nothing wrong with the other way, but I just think this is, this is a better way is to use your label manager but you get to the same place you'll want to go to regions either way and type in an expression so what I wanted to see was the territory name and we'll say we'll go with this example someone did you have your space 
add another feature in and then we'll have your custom text we'll say region colon space and then we'll add in the name of the region so when we do this and I apply it oops it helps if you turn the label features on you can see that it'll tell you that that's Mineralia, this is Quaria, but they're both in Region 4. And since I have the Maplex engine on, it automatically has the centered alignment and it puts it for each one. I would want to make them stand out a little bit more, so we might make it gray, make it size 16, bold, maybe grayed out a little bit more. Okay, so it doesn't show up too good, that might have been not the best example, but another reason I would want to use the Mapplex engine is because, let's make that a little darker real quick, if you use the Mapplex engine you can always go to properties like I showed you and turn off this overrun feature and then reduce the font size and without telling it any specific values or messing with the, the deeper settings in those, it's going to put everything in each feature and if you have a static map especially since you've got the labeling of the rivers and the labeling of each city point it's it's nice to have it all kinda not overlap and have it look a little bit tidier so your, your map isn't as busy because that that comes into play quite a bit when you're trying to convey information and display your data in a meaningful manner but that's what I meant for labeling your regions is each territory has a separate name but they're all tied to a specific region one through four another way you could have done this is you could have just instead of having the space there you could have said VB new line and then closed your uh, ampersand and that would have given you the exact same thing two ways to do the same get the same result so those are just, those are just some tricks that I want to show you some some tools to put in your bag to carry on with you that you can use to make a, a dynamic label that updates as you update your data as you update your map, but something that is a little little fancier that some people don't know how to do and you just have to know some very basic coding. Now, let's see. That is it on my list for things that you had to do. So you would have saved this map, and again, some people had. You guys had really good maps as far as I'm concerned. There were just minor nitpicky deductions that I took off. And I think even if you're not happy with your grade, again, everybody everybody should be okay with where they're at. I think we're, we're doing good and we're on the right track. And it, it brought up some different things that I think we need to work on. For example, the first four questions, which threw everyone for a loop. And I apologize for that if, if you didn't feel like you were prepared. But... Before I go into this, I do want to stress that what you had in the book was enough to get the answers for this. So this is kind of where, you know, the prerequisite of having computer classes before, like an intro to computer and knowing how to use Microsoft Excel and work in tables, that would have come into play here. And I, because it might have been a stretch for you to go that extra step and try to figure it out on your own and some people got a couple of the questions right but I, I, I originally had it at the five points and I docked it down to three so that way those questions weighed a little less and that was more or less your curve like I wrote in the announcement but I'm going to show you how I would have gotten the various test questions in the next part of this video